This is part four of the video series on Bernoulli's equation and how we can apply it onto different flow situations. We're going to be talking about confined flows in this video. And when we say confined flow, what we mean is that the fluid is being physically constrained within some device, within some object, so that we cannot find out what the pressure is uh, as we did for the free jet example in the previous video. That means that we have to look at different cases like nozzles or pipes in which the diameter of the pipe is changing or the diameter of the nozzle is changing. Because the diameter is changing, then that means that the fluid velocity is going to be changing because the flow area is different from one section to another. That means that it is important for us to not just use the Bernoulli's equation, but also use the conservation of mass equation, which is known as the continuity equation, along with Bernoulli's equation. For this, let's consider an example in, in which fluid is flowing through a fixed volume, like the syringe that is being shown in this figure. It has one inlet and it has one outlet. Assuming that the flow is steady, that means that the rate at which the fluid is going to move inwards is going to be equal to or must equal the rate at which the fluid flows out of the volume. That means that mass is going to be conserved. Now that means that if I wanted to find out the mass flow rate, the mass flow rate from the outlet, let me represent it by m dot, and it's usually given in terms of kilogram per second. So m dot, the units are kilogram per second. Then m dot can be given in terms of the density of the fluid, which is going to be rho, multiplied by q, where q represents the volume flow rate. The units for q are going to be meter cube per second. Now, although at the outlet, I'm using uh, subscript 2 to indicate the outlet, uh, if I just for a second assume that there's no subscripts here, then the outlet area is going to be A, and the fluid is flowing across this area, right, with an average velocity of V, and then the volume of the fluid that is crossing this area in time interval delta t is going to be equal to velocity into area into the time which is delta t. And that means that the volume per unit time is going to be equal to basically delta t is going to get go to the other side. so volume per unit time, which is the volume flow rate, which is being represented by Q, that is going to be equal to velocity into area. And that means that from this equation over here, your mass flow rate is going to be equal to a rho into velocity into area. And now for mass to remain conserved, the inflow rate should be equal to the outflow rate and designating inflow as section one and outflow as section two, that means that m dot one should be equal to m dot two. And that means that rho one, a one, v one should be equal to rho two, a two, we too. But if the density remains constant, that means we're talking about incompressible flow, then rho one is going to be equal to rho two, and we're going to get the continued equation out of it, which is going to be a one v one equals a two v two. Or we can write it in terms of the volume flow rate, which is q one equals q two. So let's, for example, apply this equation now onto this example. We've got velocity at the inlet that is given to us. We've got the area ratio that is given to us in a way. We've got 
area at 1, which is twice the area at 2. We've got the velocity at 2 that is given to us. So we can plug these values in from here, and we can find out uh, if there was an unknown, we could find it out using this equation. For example, say that we did not know what the velocity at 2 was, then all we had to do would be to plug in the value for area at 1, the value for area at 2, the velocity at 1, and through that we could find out the velocity at 2, which, which would have been equal to a1v1 divided by a2. And now I can substitute the value of a1 here, which is 2a2. And a2 is going to get cancelled out, and I'm going to be left with velocity at 2 in terms of velocity at 1. One thing to keep in mind is that usually when velocity increases, what that means is that the pressure is usually decreasing, not always, usually. Uh, for example, if you're looking at an airplane wing, uh, the velocity of the air that is going to be flowing on the top surface uh, is on average faster than the one that is flowing under the bottom surface. And because of that, the net pressure force is greater on the bottom than on the top. And because of this, the wing then generates the lift. Um, if the velocity difference is considerable, then the difference in pressure uh, can also be huge. For gases, this means that we have to take into account the compressibility effects, whereas when we talk about liquids, what this means is that the phenomena of cavitation can take place. And this phenomena of cavitation is a, a or it could be a dangerous situation if it occurs, for example, let's say for a propeller blade or if it occurs within nozzles because cavitation takes place when the pressure, when the liquid pressure is reduced to the vapor pressure. So once again, cavitation takes place for liquid flow. It can be a potentially dangerous situation and it takes place when the liquid pressure becomes equal to the vapor pressure. Uh, the vapor pressure, which is being represented by P subscript V, is the pressure at which vapor uh, bubbles start forming in the liquid. And what that means is that it's the pressure at which the liquid starts boiling. A good example of cavitation um, a good real-life example of cavitation is if you're looking at a garden hose and if there's a kink within this gar uh, garden hose, what's going to happen is that a restriction is going to take place in the flow area and because of this restriction, uh, the water velocity through the restriction will be relatively larger. And if we, produce, if we can produce a sufficient amount of restriction, then we're going to start hearing a hissing sound as well and this hissing sound is because of cavitation taking place. So cavitation can take place in these situations, the boiling can occur, and the temperature doesn't have to be high for it to take place because the vapor bubbles are gonna start forming and then they're gonna start collapsing as the fluid is moving into a region of a higher pressure, which is also a region of lower velocity. Now this higher pressure can be of the order of megapascals around it can go up to 500, 600 megapascals, and those pressures are really large. So if the bubble is collapsing, let's say, close to um, some physical boundary of a device, uh, for example, a propeller, propeller blade, then over a period of time, cavitation is going to be causing damage to the surface in which the cavitation is taking place. Then that means that proper design needs to take place and use of equipment has to be in such a way that cavitation damage is limited or is eliminated.